Hey guys, it's May May, and today I am bringing you a squash book. Now recently I showed you how to do the Explosion Envelope album, which I will link below in this video, but I also mentioned that um, my friend made squash books. Now I don't know who made this book, I just know it was given to me from my cousin. Um, every year we go on a little Christmas trip, me, my aunt, my cousin, and my mother, we call it a little mother-daughter getaway, and one year she found these little squash books and um, decorated them for us. I'm going to show you. I don't know, she did buy it, she didn't make it, and I don't know where she got it, but it is super cute. So you undo this, and watch, are you ready? It's going to kind of explode like so. Look at that, isn't that cute? I think it's super cute. And this is where my inspiration came for the um, envelope idea. I thought the envelope was very similar to this, and you get very much the same feel, but this one has covers that are a little bit different. And check this out. This is pictures of us on our little trips, which you probably can't see them very good because they're pretty tiny. But you can see that um, it's been decorated, and I don't know if she bought it decorated or if she bought it plain. I feel like she bought it plain and put her decorations on it, but I just thought this was super cute, and it's all pictures of us and stuff. So there's the front. Now, the back of this one is plain, but I'm going to show you how to not have it plain. I'm going to decorate the back of mine, too, because when you close it up, and they close so easy. Look at that. I mean, that's all there is to it. It's like an accordion. It closes so easy, but you can still use both sides and get a lot of pictures in here. So you can just do it like this, which really doesn't show you the whole thing until you do like this. It should be an explosion book, but it is a squash album. Super cool, huh? Well, let's make one. They're not really hard to make, believe it or not. They... They kind of look a lot harder than they really are. What I've done is I have cut out all of the pieces we're going to need. Um, and I'm going to show you what they are. These are the pieces that we're going to mat on the inside with. Now, I cut out 18 pieces here. And the reason I did is because I'm going to do the front and the back, remember. So I have 18 pieces. These are 4 by 4 Now, the, the measurements I'm giving you today are to make the album I just showed you, that size album. Okay, these are the front and back covers, and I use matte board that you get to matte photographs with, and people ask me where I get this, and I'll just tell you, I bought this on the clearance rack at Hobby Lobby, I got a big old pack of it for like $10, and um, some people have told me they don't sell it there anymore like that, but that's where I got it, and I still have a bunch I'm going through. These are 5x5 five five square, okay, so 5x5 five five on the covers. Now, these two pieces are what I'm going to use to cover my mat board, and I cut these seven by seven, and there's a reason. I like to have a lot of paper to wrap around because I feel like it'll keep the cover um, sturdier. It won't flip out if the adhesive were to get loose, so I cut these seven by seven. And then these are your actual pages in the book, and you'll need three of them, and these are cut eight and a half by eight and a half. It's, not, it's really not hard. It's a bunch of squares. So now, we'll start with the folding which I think is kind of fun. I think these guys are kind of therapeutic to make. I'm going to try to move this so it doesn't get in our way. Now, you have a couple options. You can score this guy, or you can just fold it. I'm going to score it just to show you guys how to do it if you're going to score. So I'm going to use my big scoreboard today. And let me find a bone folder. My bone folders always hide from me. Here's one. <laughs> okay. Um, this is an eight and a half by eight and a half square piece of paper. So we're going to score it at four and a quarter. So you're just going to score here at four and a quarter. Okay. I think I went offline. I did. Let me do that a couple times to get it in there good. So we're scoring at four and a quarter. And then I'm going to flip it over and score it at four and a quarter one more time. Just like that. And then we'll move this guy out of the way. And now we'll do some folding. So I'm just going to fold this guy to the center, like so, lining up the edges, and then crease that down. Nice and snug. Then I'm going to fold this guy this way, and crease that down nice and snug. Just like that. And now, for the fun part, we're going to take it and fold it across on the diagonal. So we're going to take the sides. I've got a little buckle right here. There we go. We're going to take these sides and fold it over to one corner just like this. Crease that down, lining everything up nice and even. You want those points to match as close as possible and then crease it. Now the other thing you want to do is fold it the opposite way and crease it. 
just to get those creases in there really good. I'm going to go ahead and fold these back on themselves. We want this paper to be very movable. You want it to be very fluid. Now you only have to do one diagonal fold. You don't do them in both places, just in one side. Okay? So now let me get the other sheet and do the same thing. Let me go ahead and show you one more time, just so that we're all on the same sheet of music. All right, four and a quarter, which is right down the center. Okay, turn it one time and do it again, four and a quarter. So we're basically just making four quadrants or four squares on our page. So I'm gonna go ahead and score that one. Do this one while we're here. And then we'll start folding. So we'll fold this in half. Crease it down. Fold it in half, just on our score lines at this point. Crease it. And now we'll do that diagonal fold. Doesn't matter which way, as long as it's one point to one point. And try to line it up as nice and straight as you possibly can. You could spend all day on this part. like that. If there's a spot I'm going to take my time, it's that fold. Because I really do want it to be as close to that point as I can get it. Now we're going to go back and fold the opposites. This is where we give that fluid motion to the paper because we're breaking those fibers up so much. Now I will tell you this, I'm using a good sturdy cardstock. Um, I would suggest a nice sturdy cardstock. This is going to get a lot of movement when you open and close that book, so you do want to use something really sturdy. So there we go. They're all three folded like they should be. Now we're going to attach them together. And I'm going to use some of my good old sticky tape. Now listen, this is what you want to do. You want to treat it like a mini album. So use the kind of adhesives you would use on a mini album, which are not your tape runners and your ATG. It's your stronger tapes. Now I want to show you, and I've tried to zoom my camera out enough to where this will do this. I'm taking the folded diagonal line, and on all three pages, it's going to run up and down. Now we will adhere these together at these squares. See how they match up here? And then we'll match this one up here. See how it's already coming together? It's pretty cool and pretty quick. So we're gonna adhere these together right here in these squares. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and put adhesive here so you can see me do that. I'll put it in this middle section of squares. show you a trick with your adhesive. If you take your bone folder and lay it at the edge of wherever you stick it down and you can rip it that way, you get a really nice square or straight rip. And you basically just put it wherever you want to rip it and lift it up. So if you're trying to fit into a certain spot, that's a good way to do that. Like I went over right here, but I can just trim it away. Nope. Is it driving you guys insane that they don't match? Oh, I know some people that would be like, no, you have to fix that. <laughs> I'm just not that person. Sometimes I am. Sometimes I'm not. This is not going to show. I just know it's going to hold it in place. Now I'm just peeling these little backers off. Now notice I only put the adhesive on the squares that don't have the diagonal lines. Doesn't that make it easy to be able to just reference it that way? I think it does. Okay. Now then, we'll make this even easier. I'm going to lay this piece with the adhesive facing up. Just like that diagonal lines facing up, okay? Then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to match it into that corner and I'm going to clear the score line. I do not want to cover it. I want to go right beside the score line, which even helps more because it helps you to line it up perfectly by just fitting it in that square. And now we'll do the other one. And I'm going to turn it around because I am right-handed. So I'm going to turn it this way so I can get to it. We'll do the same thing. We're going to the score line but not over it. If you go over a score line, it builds bulk. If you go to a score line, it helps you stay nice and flat. So check it out. Now, you'll be able to close this. And this works much better when you have your, um, your covers on the end. But we're going to go ahead and give it one good fold, like it's supposed to go. And we're going to crease it all down. So it'll get used to going in that motion. Take this and fold it 
this away, push that in. At first, you'll just have to kind of make it happen. And when you get your covers on, like I said, this will go easier, but we just want to kind of get it folded, give it some good creases, and I'm going to go back and crease it the other way, too. Okay, now when you fold this, here's the thing. These points come in, these points go back, okay? So you'll notice this is going to fold down, this is going to fold down, and those are going to fold downward, okay? So that's how it will do, and when you open it, those will pop forward. Make sense? Let's try that again. Didn't get that one in. All right, ready? When you open it, those middle ones will pop forward and the side ones pop open. Very good. All right, and you'll work that in. The more you use it, the better it'll get. Just crease, crease, crease. Let's work on the covers. So here's my cover pieces, what I'm going to cover with, and then these are um, my mat boards. Now, another thing I want you to know is this. This piece actually becomes the mat on the back side of your cover. So you know how you normally mat something? This does become the mat. That's another reason you want to make sure that you cut your pieces that are going to cover your mat board a little larger than you probably need them to be because you want to have plenty of coverage. That'll make sense in a second. I'll show you in a minute. Put some adhesive down here. If you're interested in the adhesive I use, I'll leave a link below. I love this stuff. It's awesome. Okay. It's also very affordable. It's, it's no name. It doesn't really have like a brand name. We just call it sticky tape and it's very affordable. All right. Now then, I'm going to take my paper and I'm just going to sit it facing upward. I'm just going to use my mat to kind of make sure I'm square there and then I'm just going to eyeball put this on. I know I have plenty to be able to eyeball it. And just stick that down. All right, I'm going to do the same thing to the other one and then we'll be in the same spot. So I've got them both laid out on the cover and now what I'd like to do is take my ruler and my X-Acto knife and I use my ruler to guide me out a quarter of an inch, not a quarter, an eighth of an inch. You don't have to do that. You can just eyeball it, but don't cut it flush with that corner. And I'll show you why in a second. You want to leave, and let me bring this up where you can see it. You want to leave some of the white hanging over that edge so you can get a good curve, but not too much, just about an eighth of an inch. So I just use my ruler to help me do that. Just cut these corners away. This is going to make a good mitered edge. Can I tell you that I love straight lines? Like, I love anything that has nice, clean lines more than circles. Like, I like to deal in straight lines, so this is right up my alley. <laughs> I love all of these things. All right, let's do another one. All right, so we've got these um, cut like they should be. Now let's add our adhesive to the edges. I love the width of this. I use this width so much. This is the one that is, I think, 5 8 Pretty close to 5'8", and I use it so much. I love it. All right. Oh, I don't want to peel that away yet. I'll tell you why. Some of this may seem like overkill, but I promise it'll give you a much prettier book when you finish. I'm going to take my bone folder, and I'm going to run it down the sides of these mat board pieces, just scoring those edges so it'll help us get a much prettier, cleaner, neater fold. The reason is, if you do this, it will move the fibers out of the way for the paper so that it can fold without breaking the fold or breaking the paper. What that means is it won't give you that crackly edge. Now what I like to do is work my hand around the paper, just kind of massaging it into place. And I know that sounds weird, but that's really what I'm doing is trying to use the heat of my hand and just bend that upward. I think that gives us a much better fold if we start that way. Now I'm going to remove the adhesive backer from one. And then I'm going to continue that same rubbing motion, working that edge down, like so, okay? I'm going to do that all the way around. I don't just take these and flip them over, because you can get kind of an air pocket in there, and that's not what you want. You want to kind of rub them into place like this, starting from the back and working your way forward. Last one, 
in my opinion, you just get a better fold when you do that. So now you can see. And none of our corners are cut away. All of them have fabric, or fabric, all of them have paper on them because we left that little bit of an edge. So nothing is exposed. All right, let me do the other one and we'll get right back together. All right, so both of our covers are done now. I'm gonna flip these guys over and have them ready and bring our album back. Now here's what you know. You know you want these two open points to be the outside of the album. And this is the top inside. This is the way it opens, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and put adhesive back here. Okay, so I've removed the backer from one side and I wanna make sure I find that free edge, okay? The free edge is gonna be the part that we're gonna adhere down as the top of the book. We know that's the part that's gonna open. So I'm going to line this up and just center it inside or on top of that cover. Okay, now I'm gonna peel this off. Now, before we go any further, it's time to put the ribbon on that will become what ties the book shut. So I'm gonna cut a piece of ribbon away. Now, depending on how big you like your bows, you can cut your ribbon to that length. Now, here's what I like about what I try to do. If I'm giving something to someone else, I try to give them extra ribbon for a bow. The reason is, not everybody can tie a tiny bow, so you just wanna make sure you give them some extra. Now, I've folded my ribbon in half and I've creased this corner, and that's to let me know where the center is so I can just kind of eyeball center it on my book, like so. Okay, and then we'll put our cover on. Make sure my paw prints are in the same direction. And then, to put the cover on, what I like to do is match the bases. You know, match the, um, what am I trying to say? The covers, the top cover and the bottom cover. I like to match them up. So you have a nice square. So now, your closure is in the book. So when you tie it around the front, you can see you get that same look I had earlier. All right, so now look how much easier this opens because these guys are doing the work for you. Isn't that cool? But now we got to mat all these things on the inside. So let me show you what we do with that. These are the pieces that I cut earlier that are four by four square. Now obviously these guys will fit in here perfectly. See how they're already matte? They already give you the perfect edge and everything around each of the triangles. Let's find the ones we want to put everywhere. Now, how did I match this paper up? I used a paper pad. If you use a paper pad, you know that your paper is pretty much going to match anything. All of this paper came from the same paper pad, which is a doggy one. I'll show you when we get to the cover again. All right, now what I want to do is I want to take one, two, three, four, five, six of these guys, six of these mats. I'll go ahead and lay them out and make sure I like the colors. Okay, so all of these pieces are the ones I'm gonna use for the points here, for the triangles. But first, I'm gonna go ahead and adhere all these pieces down so I can just close the book. Now, I'm using my liquid glue at this point because it dries fast and it's a lot less tearing and ripping and things that I have to do. So it makes things go a little bit faster. And I can get it right to the edge. So then we just mat these guys. I know it's hard to see this one, but I'll get to the center in just a second. You don't have to score these guys or anything because they are the, the flats, you know, they don't have to fold. So they're perfect and they're super easy. Can you see how easy this is to do? You could pump these out for all kinds of occasions, couldn't you? I actually made one before for a baby shower years ago. Um, gosh, probably four years ago um, for one of the ladies in my church and she really liked it. I thought it was nice. And I'm pretty sure she liked it. I felt like she did. But it was for her daughters. It might have even been a birthday present, not a baby shower. I can't remember exactly. But you can just do any kind of theme you can imagine. I like this dog theme. It's probably hard for you to tell that this is dog themed paper. But it is. There's, it says dog. It's got paw prints on it and things like that. Alright, so now i got all those in place. I'm going to go ahead and close this back up. Sit this aside while we prep these guys. And they are super easy to do. I'm going to cut them all at one time, put all the squares together, and I'm going to line the points on my cutting blade or where it cuts on my little line here. 
Now these are already cut short enough to have a matte edge and the reason is our squares that are folded are actually four and a quarter by four and a quarter where these are four by four. So just by cutting these in half, you get your automatic little mats. I'll show you, show you what I mean. So open this guy back up, the right way up. <laughs> okay, now then let's just kind of go crazy. Let's see, what do I have this guy here? I think I did. I'm going to put it there. So, these automatically sit inside your score lines because of the size we cut them. So, you're going to place these right inside these little triangles. And you get that pretty color in between. That blue color is going to show. I think I'll use a polka dot. Now, these aren't going to be laid out exactly. And one of the reasons is because now that I've cut them, I can mix them up even more. It doesn't have to be full sheets. And I'm not matching them necessarily. I'm just doing different ones of the triangles in each little section. I'm just going to keep putting these little pieces on and we'll get right back together. So this is the inside with all the pieces glued down. Isn't that cool? Now I'm going to flip it over and do the back side, which you don't have to do. I just want to do it. I think it's there and I think it's usable real estate, right? So I'm going to take some more paper and we're doing the same thing. I'm covering the squares in the centers. You do have to slide it up under your little um, cover a little bit, but not bad. And it should clear just fine because the cover actually opens up. It doesn't slide in. So there's one page. Go ahead and do this side. Now, if you're going to make a bunch of these, go ahead and cut all your pages at one time and save yourself some headache. You know, don't try to cut just for this, that, and the other. You already know the dimensions, so go ahead and cut a whole bunch at one time. And then you can just kind of go to town gluing. I'm just going to glue all these little pieces on, and we will get back together. All right, guys, so I have the inside and the back side all done. So here's the inside. You see how floppy it's gotten because of the way... <laughs> We're using it, and there is the backside. All covered, all real estate for pictures and all that fun stuff. Now then, let's close it up. It will train to close easier as you go. Okay, so there is our little album. Now I have something I want to put on the front, a little piece. I also told you I'd show you the um, thing it came from. This is called Deja Views is the name of this paper, and it's Dog Days. And this was sent to me in a Christmas D-stash, which I just love it. And I have these little pieces that are vellum pieces that are cute, but I don't think they'll show very well. So I'm going to use one of these little cutout pieces for my front. And I love these little paw prints. Give a dog a bone. It's cute. Let's see. I like that. I think I'm going to use this best friends one. I'm going to pop it out real quick. And I popped out this little bone because I think it's cute. Now, I'm not going to put a lot of dimension on the front because of the way the ties go over. But I do think it's cute to put something down. So I'm just going to put these down flat just to give it some decoration. And of course, you could do all kinds of things to the front of this album, not just this. And you don't have to have a closure that's a string like that. You could do a different kind of closure. I just think that really works well. But you could do a belly band. That would work. And then we'll put this little Best Friends, something like that. This might have been super cute if we had inked all these little edges, but hindsight. These little hearts were in the pack too. I'm going to use them just for a little extra added something in this top corner up here. One here. And then one here. Just to give it a little some color. Alright guys, and then... When you close it up, you just tie the ribbon. Now this is probably way too many tails for anybody, but a couple of things can happen to your book. One is, give it to somebody that's not real good at tying bows and you want to give them plenty of room. And another, if they add photos and it gets a little thicker, it gives some more room for height. So you don't have to um, cut this really short, but you can. I'm going to cut them a little bit because I think they're a little bit long. 
but I would leave them about like that so that people had some room to grow. So there you go, guys. It's a squash book. I think it is super, super cute, and they're not hard to make. They seem like it. When you open this, people are going to be like, you made this? And you're like, yeah. <laughs> they seem hard to do, but they're not that hard to do. So there's that one. And um, let me know what you think. I hope you enjoyed this one. And if you make any, I would love to see them. Please head over and join our Facebook group called May May Made It and So Did I. And show me what you're making. I like seeing it. Even if it's not something I inspired you to do, show me something that you're making. And let us see what kind of crafts are coming out of our May May family. Awesome, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow for our Hide His Word in My Heart scripture art journaling um, journey that we're doing. That was a lot to get out. And until then, have a great one. Bye-bye.